Right, so hello everyone, it's the Cricket Connoisseur here and welcome to episode 12 of the TCC Talks podcast. Today I'm joined by someone who will be very familiar to any fans of Derbyshire County Cricket Club out there. It is none other than Finn Hudson Prentice. So first things first, Finn, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast today. How's your day been so far, mate? <laughs> yeah, it's actually been a, been a different day for me this morning. Woke up very early and uh, took myself for a bike ride trying to get uh, blow a few cobwebs out and get used to maybe getting into a routine again. So yeah, early wake up. So it's uh, been a long day considering it's only 11 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, flipping heck. Fair play though, getting the grind, getting the fitness back. But um, yeah, to kickstart this podcast, we always start with right at the beginning, the origin story. What was your first memory of cricket, either watching or playing the game? Um, my first memory from watching was the 2005 Ashes. I think that's quite a common answer, but that was definitely my first memories of watching um, on TV. I remember watching Sussex down at Hove in live games in sort of 2004, 2005, 2006. Um, but don't really, like that was the series, that, that 2005 Ashes series was the one that I really remember. Um, I was sort of nine, ten years old. Um, at that stage so yeah that was definitely the series that stood out for me yeah and for many other England fans what a yeah. series that was um yeah similar age to me actually I was I was I think I was eight when I first watched my England series 2009 Ashes Monty and Jimmy doing the great escape in Cardiff but yeah. um yeah you mentioned obviously that was a fun, fantastic series some massive names in that series as well who were your real cricketing inspirations back then who did you look up to uh, obviously being an all-rounder it was Andrew Flintoff um Dad always used to say to me when I was younger, he was like, you need to bat and bowl. You need to give yourself the opportunity because if your batting doesn't go well, then you're going to be standing in the field for a long time. Okay. Um, so he always told me to do that. So from a young age, I sort of followed all-rounders. I loved Kevin Peterson and that Ashes, as everyone obviously does, but debut series to come out of that arrogance and flair and just <laughs> whack the all-time greats everywhere was obviously brilliant. So um, definitely Andrew Flintoff would be my sort of idol growing up especially from that series. But Kevin Peterson stood out as well, obviously, as he would do for many England fans. Yeah, of course. I, I, I like those choices, by the way. Both uh, big characters <laughs> as well. But, um, yeah, what made you choose seam bowling in particular then? Because, obviously, as an all-rounder, you could have gone into off-spin, leg-spin. What, what was it about seam that made you go in that direction? Um, to be honest, when I was younger, my dad, um, my dad played a bit of club cricket, village cricket, um, when he or school cricket when he was younger. Um, and he used to... Uh, so he used to whack spinners everywhere was his sort of theory he used to say, oh yeah, spinners rubbish um so he made me uh made me do the do the seam bowling he was like get get into that um that mold always wanted me like, like he loves quick bowlers like loves watching fast bowling and stuff so he was always like oh, i'd go down that route um so yeah that was sort of the path i followed from a young age was he used to just say accuracy and then pace will follow so it was more about accuracy and the pace has never really followed so <laughs> medium fast but you don't need to be express not everyone turns out to be Brett Lee or Sherbax are do they but um, yeah I mean great great bowlers <laughs> but uh, yeah it's just not possible unfortunately but what made you choose cricket over like football and rugby because obviously they're two massive massive sports in our country and a lot of people do choose them over cricket what made you choose cricket in particular um it's a strange one I'd I was always a massive football fan and player when I was a kid, um, as I think most kids in the UK are. Um, like you said, cricket um, sort of takes a back seat to a lot of the other sports, or particularly football, rugby, um, at this moment. So, yeah, I think as a, it was sort of like my strongest sport, I'd, I'd say, would have been cricket. Um, I was a bit of a rebel in the classroom. I never couldn't sit still. Um, always wanted to be playing some sort of sport and doing some sort of exercise. So. Um, I think my focus to being a professional sportsman sort of became more enhanced maybe as I got a little bit older towards sort of like 13, 14, definitely wanted to play a professional sport and I was definitely better at cricket than anything else really. Um, so I think that's sort of where that came from was just maybe ability in the game. Um, and I just loved it. I, I remember I'd, from the start at the age of sort of eight, nine, um, absolutely loved cricket. I don't know what it was. I think it's the camaraderie and sort of team team value having cricket which is a, a lot different compared to other sports um I know obviously you're playing in team sports but a lot of the stuff you see in football it's you score a goal and it's all about one player and you see a lot of headlines it's all about one player it's not really about teams <laughs> whereas in cricket you do something and win games and it's all about 
the team camaraderie and all that sort of jazz. So I guess I kind of like that sort of aspect of cricket, which is a little bit different to obviously singular sports like golf and tennis. And obviously I find it a little bit different to the likes of football and rugby, especially because a lot of time in cricket, you're spending a lot more time with your peers um, over periods of like three, four days. So um, yeah, definitely. I think that would probably be the main reason. Well, yeah, it's a great reason. I mean, yeah, as you said, you just you create some good um, good partnerships, good relationships, don't you, in cricket? Yeah, it's quite a unique sport. Also, in the way that it's it's almost a mix of two because technically you're based on your individual performances a lot more in cricket compared to football. But as you said, you can't win without the collective effort of the team. Yeah, yeah. yes, it's unique to say the least, and I think that's probably why we as cricket fans and cricket players such as yourself actually like the game, isn't it? It's, one that's um it's all building towards that sort of team win which is nice exactly so you mentioned at the time 13 14 you were actually in, in sussex's youth development program back then and then in 2014 you finally got your first contract with sussex which is your home county how did that feel how proud was that of an achievement yeah it was great um it was obviously something i'd built towards for obviously five six years um parents had sacrificed a lot for me um, and my sister, to be fair, sacrificed a lot. It's almost as if I was getting all the attention because mum and dad had to always drive me everywhere. Um, so, so thanks for that, if she sees this. Um, but yeah, it was, it was obviously amazing. Um, just being able to sort of class yourself as a professional after all those years of hard work, um, leaving school early all the time to go and go, go down the nets at Sussex and get the extra training in and yeah, it was obviously fantastic when the day came and they sort of just mentioned to me that it was going to be happening and I didn't have to worry about potentially going to university um, and all that. At that time, as an 18-year-old, it was obviously very exciting so I could focus everything into cricket rather than obviously trying to balance study and cricket as well. Um, so, yeah, it was obviously a great feeling, especially down at your home county, to do that. Yeah, exactly. That, that just adds a little bit more to it, doesn't it, really? But um, how would you describe your time at Sussex? Because how many seasons was it? Three seasons in, in total. How would you describe your time down on the South Coast? Um, yeah, it, it, up and down. I remember when I was, yeah, I made my debut in 2014, I think. My List A debut, and that was obviously amazing. I remember I was still at school at the time. Um, so, yeah, it was obviously, there was a lot of highs, like first class debut as well, um, the year later. So yeah, there was, there was obviously those highs, but also at the same time, there's a lot of lows. Like I'd, I'd never really broke into the first team for a consistent spell. Um, it was almost as if I was filling in for players a lot of the time. Um, we had a very strong squad at the time, and I never really took the opportunity uh, when I got into the first team selection and the squads and stuff. I never really capitalised on that. Um, and then just yeah, I, I never really kicked on. I think I, I had a good year, my first year in the second team uh, when I was sort of eighteen. Um, had a really good season then, had a really good season when I was 19 and then sort of when I was on my last year, I uh, had, a, had a pretty average season in the second team and then got a chance in the first team, got a four game stretch um, towards the back end of the season because we had a couple of injuries and didn't take my chance. So I think sort of being on the last year of my contract as well, um, things sort of went pretty badly considering I was going into the last couple of months of my deal, got a couple of injuries, got a stress fracture. So it was all a bit everything went a bit downhill from, from there really and ended up in me getting released. So I'd say up and down, obviously a lot, I've taken away a lot of positives. Um, definitely first class and list day debuts, obviously a very proud moment. Still got the caps for them um, at home. And uh, that obviously ended in a pretty negative way after such a short period. Well, yeah, you mentioned that, got released in 2016. And then I was reading um, your article with a cricketer and I found this really quite interesting. You actually took a year off, basically, from the professional game. You went and played club cricket. How did you overcome the disappointment of being released by Sussex? And how did you find the, the inner resolve to kind of come back from that? Uh, it, it, was, it was obviously devastating. I mean, at that time, I didn't have, obviously, as I said before, it was obviously great at the time not going to university and all that. But then, obviously, coming out of cricket, I didn't have anything. Um, so I was 20, straight out of the game, had nothing, had no qualifications, just had my GCSEs and A-levels, um, which obviously aren't too much to speak of when you're going into sort of the world of looking for jobs. So it was obviously at that time, it was very tricky. I mentally was in a bad place. I hated the game um, towards the back end of that. I really 
didn't like it because I thought it was all unfair. Um, classic immature mindset. Didn't really look at the outcome. It was just all negatives at that time. So I decided I'd, I'd already booked a plan to go out to Australia for five, six months um, that winter. So I decided to stay out there for a bit longer. I went out there for seven or eight months in the end um, and just worked out there as a labourer, a gardening labour worker, which was interesting, something I'd never done, um, especially straight off the back of a stress fracture. probably wasn't my wisest choice. Um, but yeah, I just went out there, enjoyed some sunshine, played club cricket over in Australia, came home, played club cricket in England and um, sort of found the love again, obviously winning stuff. I won, a, won the league with my home club in Sussex. Um, we won the Premier League for the first time in the club's history um, that season. And we got to the uh, last four of the national competition as well. So overall, it was a very good season. I think that sort of gave me that love again of just like winning games with your mates and having a good time. And you find the reasons why you actually played the game in the first place. And it's not because you want a contract and you want to play 20 years of professional cricket. It's because you love the game. And obviously, that will get you as far as you want, want it to get you. Obviously, your love for the game is what you get success from. So I um, yep. sort, of, sort of found that again, really. And then that's where it all came from, I guess. Yeah, that's a really nice way of putting it. And of course, yeah, you found your love again. And after that period away, you came back, you played for the MCC Young Cricketers, and that's where you met Steve Kirby. Now, Steve <laughs> Kirby has been pretty much instrumental in, in progressing your career. How, how, would you, um, how would you describe Steve Kirby's role? How, how big a role <laughs> has he actually played? Uh, to be honest, I see him, he's, he's one of my friends now, but I, I would have seen him as a massive mentor in my career so far. Um, it feels like I've been around for a long time, but I look at it, I'm only 24. So it's not actually been around for very long at all. Um, but he's sort of been at the mainstay of it for the last sort of three years. Um, obviously, I worked with him my first year on the YCs in 2017, 18. Um, and he was great. He was brilliant. Um, just a very, very unique character, very... Um, I don't know if you ever remember watching him on TV, but he's always came across a bit of a hothead when he played <laughs> cricket. But he's he's not at all. Like he's just a um yeah, he's just very goes very hard on the field, like has a has a great sense of humour, good banter, um, but works very hard off the field as well. And that's one of the things I've taken from him really is trying to get your priorities right off the field and then it'll all flow into one on, on the field. So he's been great, obviously, working with him for the last sort of three years. And it was quite ironic, really, that when he moved to Derbyshire, I sort of followed him there. <laughs> well, yeah, let's talk about Derbyshire. Because, yeah, there were some incredible stats on your debut. Um, <laughs> genuinely incredible. I mean, to anyone listening, just listen to this, OK? 99 on your first ever innings. You're one run away from a century. And then, in Middlesex's innings, you take the wicket of Max Holden with the first ever ball for Derby. <laughs> to make yourself the fifth person in Derbyshire's history to take one, to take a wicket with your first ball, and the first since 1980. Now, that to me just screams instant impact. How do you actually look upon that day? What, what do you look back on? Uh, I look back on the fact that I got 99 and can't believe why I didn't just try and get a single instead of trying to <laughs> hit a boundary and top edge and all. Um, I think that'll always be in my memory until I finally score 100, but there you go. Um, I'll do I'll, yeah, it was a great. It was obviously fantastic. Like you look at it now, I look back at it now. Obviously, it was well, nearly almost a year ago. I think it's a year ago next week. Um, so it's obviously time flies. But yeah, it was obviously incredible to be out there. To be honest, I remember Dave Houghton, the head coach, just telling me a week before saying, "Oh, you're going to be included in the squad, um, and you're probably going to bat sort of seven or eight. And I remember in the warm up, um, Wayne Madsen had been carrying an ankle injury for a while, and um, they just said, look, we're going to rest Mads. Um, we've got a T20 competition obviously coming up in, in a couple of weeks. And we want him to be fit for that. Um, so we're resting him. Do you want to bat at three? <laughs> it just sort of like the day before the game, they said, do you want to go bat at three? Or, and I was like, well, obviously, it's quite a tough question to say no to. And you want to be batting at the top of the order? So I said yes. Um, and luckily, it was a flat wicket and I got a few runs. Um, and the next day... <laughs> We were in the field for a while. I think it was like the 70th over. Billy, um, Billy Goddleman chucked me the ball and just said, look, we're going to try and hold up an end until the second new ball and try and blow them away with that. Can you just do us a job? And I remember taking a wicket first ball <laughs> and him sort of coming in going, or you, can, or you can take a wicket if you want. <laughs> um, 
because I think at the time I'd, I'd signed with Derbyshire as a batsman who bowled a bit and ended up obviously finishing off the season as a bowler who batted a bit. So it's it's been a strange turnaround since um, <laughs> since this time last year, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you mentioned that in the in the T20 Blast. First of all, congratulations. That was a wonderful run that it had in the semi-finals. First time in Derbyshire's history. Um, yeah, batting right down the order. And you finished with 11 wickets, making you the third highest wicket taker on the team. Um, yeah. how, how much of a, how much of a, of a shift was that? Because as you mentioned, you were primarily a batsman. How much of a, a transition was that to become a bowler who bats? Um, well, obviously, I've, I've still got aspirations, massive aspirations to sort of bat in the top five. Um, that was the aim to try and break into that this season. But obviously, whatever's happened has happened. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's strange because I've always batted my bowling, but I've never really thought of it as being anything special. I've always enjoyed my batting more in a sense. Um, but I think working obviously with Steve Kirby, who's a bowler, he's helped my bowling come on leaps and bounds over the last sort of year and a half, two years, from a point of where I was just a fifth choice bowler, sixth choice bowler. So now I'm bowling, I opened the bowling in a few first class games last season um, and bowling first change primarily. So yeah, it was obviously an interesting switch, um, but it's one of those things I, I, I bat myself with my cricketing ability. I'm quite an aggressive, I have quite an aggressive mindset of things. I don't really like holding back. So in a sense, it was almost like a an easy way to express myself. Like T20, never played in T20 cricket before, just go out and have fun and enjoy the opportunity, which is um, something that I wouldn't have ever thought I'd say to myself two years previous. But yeah, it was pretty crazy to, it was almost like learning skills on the job, I guess, because I've never really played a T20 game before. Learning how to bowl certain deliveries or bowl Yorkers, slower balls, all these different things like during the season. Um, so, yeah, it was quite interesting. I think I started off quite poorly, but as the season went on, I settled in very well, um, which is a credit to Derbyshire, for, especially Dominic Cork, for keeping me in the side and saying, just go with it and you'll learn. So, yeah, it was obviously great. Brilliant time. Well, you talked about your um, aggressive mindset. That's not just with the bowling. Let me get you another stat. 69.09 <laughs> strike rate in county cricket. Second highest on Derbyshire. And in addition <laughs> to that, you're the fifth leading run scorer. So those runs, those 342 runs came very quickly. Second only behind, I think, Matt Critchley, who obviously is down the order a bit. Um, what influences you to, to score at that rate? Are you, what actually influences that kind of mindset? I think, to be honest, there was a few occasions last year where I came in and batted at seven or eight um, and we were like 60 for six a couple of occasions. So it was more of a counter, counter attack. Like it, it wasn't really like, that's why it was quite funny. Um, I played a game against North Ant at Chesterfield and it was a um, pretty up and down cracked pitch um, and the wicket was playing a few tricks. Um, on day two, day three, and I remember coming in, we were 60 for six and sort of slogging my way to 50 or 55 not out of about 40 balls. And similar in the second innings, got 40 not out of 30 balls or something, just swinging the bat really. It wasn't really any, anything behind it. So that would probably have a big thing to do with it. Um, but generally, I, I, my mindset, would I, I like scoring quickly. I, as a batsman, your job's to score runs. Um, you'd rather be scoring runs than battling for survival. Obviously, there are occasions where you need to bat for survival and all that. Um, all that sort of thing. But naturally, I'll, I'll look to score. That's my first my first option is score runs, hit a boundary. Um, that's what I look for. And then it'll sort of adjust as the ball lets go of the ball to determine where it is. But I think that's the way I play. It's sort of always been like that. I've always been quite an aggressive player in terms of my, my job's to score runs. So I'm looking to score all the time. Um, I like to like to think of myself as quite a free flowing player in the sense of I've I have quite a few shots to my disposal. So um that's credit to my, my dad is again for throwing millions of balls to me at the age of eight, nine, ten, eleven, sort of in, in the nets, blowing his shoulder out every summer. Um but yeah, that's uh, I guess it's just that. It's just the fact that I want to score runs. So it just sort of flows that way and aggressive mindset. So yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense, having your idols as Peterson and, and Flintoff now. Two guys <laughs> who definitely scored their runs quite quickly. Um, yeah, talking of scoring runs quickly, obviously there's a massive difference between County Championship cricket and T20 Blast cricket. Which one do you prefer? Which one would you rather be, obviously, the mainstay in and why? Why would you choose that format? Um, well, I'd love to be an all-three formats player. 
Um, Good answer. I, I would love to be. Um, I played. I, mean, I wasn't around in the one-day competition last year, but I played both formats, um, first class and T20. I, to be honest with you, I'm a tra- traditional sort of person. I like Red Bull cricket. Um, I do love T20. I love the opportunity it's given the world of cricket. I love the money it's brought into the sport. But like the dream is to play test cricket. So you want to be, if you're going to do that, you have to do well in Red Bull cricket. Um, so I like, I like the art of Red Bull cricket. I like the battle. Um, it's more prolonged. You don't, you, it's, it's hard to hide weaknesses in Red Bull cricket. Um, and it's just the mental battle. It's, it's one of those things that you just, you have to be in a battle and if you don't get into the battle you won't win the thing I guess um, it's just about grind, occasionally grinding it out with bat and ball and occasionally you'll get things with the rub of the green that will go your way but the majority of the time it won't go your way so I think that's more the enjoyable side of it is like you, you've got to make the opportunities count and it's I, I feel like sometimes one day in list A or T20 cricket you can get away with a few things like you can bowl a bad ball and it gets smacked to deep square or deep mid wicket, or you can top edge one that flies for six, and you you can back away and carve it, or run down the wicket and get away with it because people aren't going to be targeting your weaknesses as much. They're just trying to protect protect scores and all that. So yeah, I think you can. I think definitely favourite would be red ball cricket. Um, that's where I've always had my sort of loyalties lie. But sort of towards the back end of last season, playing those T Twenty finals day was obviously amazing and quarterfinal was fantastic as well so you can see the why everyone loves t20 cricket obviously i love it myself but i love four day cricket more to be honest it's more of a traditional game and how how i always got brought up watching it with the obviously 2005 ashes as well well yeah definitely i'm, I'm glad i'm glad of that i mean we've seen that as quite a recurring theme actually on this podcast all the county players saying that red ball is pretty much still the top standard which is yeah. wonderful to hear, obviously. I say that as someone who loves his test cricket as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, during that, you alluded to the mental battle. So if we're going to go back to the debut, uh, you got 99 in the first innings and then a five-ball duck in the second. You got run out by David Milan, which is pretty mm-hmm. much a perfect personification of, of the challenges of, of cricket, isn't it, really? It's a roller coaster game. So yeah. how do you personally cope with those tough moments and maintain an even keel while you're out on the pitch? I think... Like there's, it's a cliche, but you can't get too high and you can't get too low. Like it's, it's in the end, at the end of the day, it's a game. Like it's obviously there's a bit of riding on it when it's your career and it's your job. But at the end of the day, it is a game. So if you do all the work off the field, like you're, you're eating the right foods, you're doing your fitness and you're doing your technical work, then realistically, you're putting yourself in the best position to succeed. And some days you're not going to succeed. And that's fine. That's just part and parcel of the job we do. Um, but then it, it means that when you do have a good day, you need to have a great day. Um, and I'll always go back, like, mental side of it's obviously very tough, but I always go back to, I remember John Lewis, um, who was the bowling coach at Sussex when I was there, he used to say, make your bad days average days, your average days good days, and your good days great days. And that's obviously not his quote. But I remember him saying that to me. Um, when I was sort of 18, 19, saying if you can do that, do that, then realistically your cricket will take care of itself. And I think that initially alluded to on the field, but I think if you can do that off the field as well, um, then that's great. I've been reading this book um, at the moment, which alludes to GEM, which is a load of whatever you want to take it. Um, gratefulness, empathy, mindfulness, gratitude. Um, and it just tells you about things that you should be um, aware of in the world. Like we're in a good position. So we've got everything we want in the UK. There's nothing really, there's no negatives from it, all that, whatever you want to take it. Um, So to have the ability to be playing a sport as a profession is obviously a great opportunity. So if you look at it that way, then it's quite hard to have, have bad days really. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you're playing, well, you're pretty much living out the cricket fans dream, aren't you really? Exactly. Be grateful and enjoy it. I think that's the most important thing. I know that's also cliche and it is very difficult in professional sport in general, but you just, you just got to keep the love somehow, haven't you really? Um, yeah. And that gets you through it. For sure. But yeah, this is kind of, we're just going to go off topic slightly because I had to bring this up. Okay. You've appeared on Wee Cricket, which is obviously one of the, the fastest growing uh, cricket YouTube channels. I think it's actually one of the largest now. So um, first of all, how would you describe your experiences with Dan and Kez? 
<laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, I have known them for a while, known about them for a long time. Um, obviously, being from Sussex, they're from the Arundel sort of area, Chichester Arundel area. Um, so I know them quite well just through their channel and what they've been doing. Um, and I did speak to them when I was on the YCs about them coming up to Lords and doing some stuff up there, but I think that got shut down quite quickly by the fact I was moving up to Derbyshire. So it was good to get that sort of sorted out. And they came up to Derbyshire in the end. And obviously now I'm partnered with them, um, doing a lot of videos and stuff with them. Hopefully more to come in the future. Um, but yeah, they're great guys. They're always, they're always a good laugh. Obviously enjoy the stuff they put on their channel. I'm a massive cricket badger, so I love listening to different things that they put out there. And I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's a unique unique partnership but I'm looking <laughs> forward to what we can sort of do in the future as well I remember I did speak to them a couple of days ago about some stuff that we could potentially do together so I'm looking forward to it hey that should be good that should be some good content coming our way but uh, yeah talking of we cricket there's also you've got now cricket districts who have now kind of taken cricket culture to the next level obviously podcasts such as this one what do you think of this new age of um, cricket fan media what do you make yes. of it yeah, I, I, I think it's great. Um, been making a concerted effort sort of recently to try and push profiling and all that sort of stuff because I'm interested in the same thing. So um, it is, it's obviously fantastic. We didn't have that two or three years ago. We didn't have the sort of social media output that sort of other sports did. So it's great to see that there's pages coming about now and different people obviously getting involved and pushing the sport because obviously the more presence you have in social media, the more popular it will become, especially with how the world's going at the moment. Um, so yeah it's obviously fantastic to see these channels growing and obviously it's a massive thing now overseas as well in India they've got a lot of channels over there and stuff and obviously now these channels are getting traction overseas um, which is fantastic because it now promotes the English game as well which obviously is good for us so um, yeah I, I've got nothing nothing bad to say about it really I think it's a really good way of sort of pushing forward the game that we obviously love yeah, exactly. And, and nothing wrong with talking about cricket. I mean, I think we all love to do it. Um, yeah, it's a great avenue in order to do it. But yeah, just that was just a bit of a, a bit of a <laughs> bit of a left field one. But uh, we'll get back on track now with uh, this next question. So obviously, only twenty four now. You're in your first. Well, this would have been your second year of Derbyshire. What would you like to achieve in the remainder of your career? What's your your real goal? Yeah. Um, obviously, the goal is to play Test cricket. The end goal. Um, or to play international cricket. There's obviously a lot of goals that precede that. Um, I think the main one for me personally would be to get Derbyshire into Division 1, um, County Championship. Um, I think that's a club goal as well um, over the next sort of two years, hopefully. Obviously, this season's a bit of a bit of a nightmare, but still got a bit of time. So, hopefully, pushing the club forward. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean... Everyone wants to play international cricket, but sometimes it doesn't happen. I'd love to play in Big Bash. Um, that's sort of that's my other sort of goal would be to play in that competition. I love Australia as a country, so to play that competition would probably be my main goal in terms of a franchise league. But um, yeah, there's obviously loads of things like trying to get called up to the England Lions, getting Derbyshire Division One. Um, obviously, goal setting with runs and wickets, whatever like season tallies um, will get you there. So I guess. Um, it's more about winning games for Derbyshire at the moment and getting us to Division 1. I think that's the main aim. Hopefully we'll get a crack at that towards the end of the season or maybe even next year. Um, but yeah, that is, that's, that's, that's the start goal. And then the end goal would be obviously playing international cricket, hopefully in the next sort of four or five years. Well, yeah, of course. I wish you the best of luck with that, definitely. And first thing for that is obviously the Lions, isn't it, really? So yeah. you never know. Keep on getting runs at 69.09. <laughs> we can see the Lions soon. <laughs> But um, yeah, you alluded there to the Big Bash. So I'm guessing that's your preferred one. Would that be above the IPL, CPL, all of the other leagues? Uh, yeah, it would be for me um, personally. Yeah, Obviously, I, I don't know anything about the standard of the leagues. Obviously, you see it on the TV and you see the players. Um, I'm more alluding to just the country. Obviously, I think the standard of the Big Bash is obviously very high and the wickets are lovely. So probably going over there and playing the Big Bash is obviously the dream, yeah. And who would you play for? What would be your ideal franchise? Well, I've spent most of my time over there in uh, in Adelaide, so it'd be the strikers for me, yeah. Especially uh, one of my close mates, Phil Salt, went over there and played for the strikers last season as well, um, which I was very jealous of. So <laughs> um, I think it would definitely have to be the strikers. 
good choice. Not one that um, many people say. They usually say the Melbourne Stars or the Brisbane Heat because they want to play with the Villiers. But um, yeah, yeah strikers, true. good choice. Alex Carey as well. Rashid Khan. We're, we're forgetting the big names in there. Yeah. Travis Head, John O'Wells. Played, yeah. played club cricket with Alex Carey. Um, he played my club team a few years ago. He was a great guy. Back in yeah. 2015, maybe. And he was our overseas player, and he didn't. He wasn't a professional player back then. He was just. He was in between changing back from. He played AFL. And he changed back from playing AFL to professional cricket, and we were sort of a stepping stone in the middle of that, which is quite quite random. Yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> good good trivia for a scary quiz. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's had a stratospheric rise, hasn't he? Really. And also, just to also mention about county cricket, this was something I saw in the news the other day with regard to Michael Vaughan, and he said the county pitches, in his words, are appalling. Um, what do you make of that comment? What do you think of the the quality of, of county wickets? Well, I know no different. I've never played international cricket, so I can I can agree or disagree with them. I think the county wickets are great. I think. It offers up a test between bat and ball. I think certain grounds obviously are different to others. I think Derbyshire is great because you get all aspects. Like day one, it seems around. Day two and three, it's flat. And day four, it starts to spin. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that as a ground. Um, I know sometimes it might be a bit soft because the weather up up this way isn't too good um, compared to when I was down in Brighton. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but no, I, I don't know. I, I've got no no real opinion on it to be honest I think that the wickets obviously are good enough if you can get like people averaging 50 with a bat and 20 with a ball in the same division so I don't I don't see the issue with it fair enough so valid opinions have uh, might be a bit different in division one though I think division yeah. one's averages were a lot low. I think in division two you had three people scoring over a thousand um division one we had one and that was Dom Sibley for my team Warwickshire but um yeah fair comment I mean, as you, you'll see that anyway. If Derbyshire get promoted, I suppose that's when you can make a, a better comment yeah. on that, isn't it? Really, you haven't really played at all, all seven, well, all eighteen, I suppose. But yeah. Uh, yeah, just to wrap up this podcast, Finn, I've really enjoyed this. It's been a great podcast. What advice have you got for any young cricketers out there who may be just starting their journey? What would you, what would you give them? Um, well, from obviously going back to what I said previously, I reckon you just have to enjoy it. Um, you'll push yourself as far as you want to go if you're enjoying the game. I think the issue lies when people start to lose that love and passion for it. So don't put yourself under too much pressure. Enjoy it. Think about the reasons why you're playing the game and then be grateful for what you have. So I'd say just make sure you're enjoying it. And yeah, that's probably the main thing I'd take away from that. Yeah, that's a really nice piece of advice. But uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up episode 12 of the TCC Talks podcast. Finn, have you got anything final to say? Do you have any social media to plug, for example? Uh, I do. It's up to, a, up, to, <laughs> up to the people. They want to follow it. It's not very interesting. But my usernames are just FinnHudson33 on Twitter and Instagram. So they're the two ones I use. Well, I'll leave them down in the, in the description to the YouTube video on this. I, I recommend that you go and follow me. He's a lovely guy. And obviously, you're going to be seeing a lot more of him on a week cricket with Dan and Kez. But uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that pretty much wraps it up from us too. To all of those who have listened, thank you very much for tuning in. As always, it's massively appreciated. And yeah, as always, guys, enjoy the rest of your day.